So let me welcome everybody who's joined us so far to the 15th of 21 sessions of the Spring Gathering for Gardener Celebration of Mind. Tonight's session is by Ed Pegg Jr. He's a longtime recreational mathematician who's worked, among other things, on the numbers. That's NUMB3RS TV show, Math World, Cut the Knot, MathPuzzle.com, and the Wolfram Demonstration Projects. After joining Wolfram Research about 20 years ago, he collaborated with Stephen Wolfram on the book, A New Kind of Science, and has since contributed several hundred Math World articles and Wolfram Demonstration Projects. For several years, he wrote an online puzzle column for the Mathematical Association of America called Ed Pegg Jr.'s Math Games. Some of his puzzles have been used by Will Shorts, for those of you who are National Public Radio fans, as I am. He's the New York Times crossword puzzle editor and the weekend edition puzzle master. Uh, Ed was one of the chief consultants to that Numbers TV series. And I feel it was really in a wonderful series and unique in that it highlighted mathematics and mathematicians in solving crimes. And he currently also maintains the mathpuzzle.com website where I found this really cool photo. That is Ed's periodic table. And if you look real closely, it is the periodic table. And he's even arranged it so that it's in, in the right perspective from the viewer. And that's on the mathpuzzle.com website. I'll put and we've that, got uh, samples of all the stable elements as well. Oh, and, and, oh in a little, in the, inside the, yeah. mm -hmm. in the pockets. <laughs> Very cool. And so now, without further ado, let me turn it over to Ed. And he's going to tell us about new substitution tiling concepts and the super golden ratio. So. Basically, the way I'm going to start is I'm going to take this simple polynomial, x uh, squared plus 1 equals x to the third, and I will magically construct a new tiling system out of nowhere. And then I'll talk about some of the other techniques that I use to find some of these new tiling systems. So if I can make this turn the page. So we have that, that uh, polynomial. And we can just basically solve it. And since it's a cubic, there are three solutions. There's the real solution and two complex solutions. And I'm going to use this um, positive complex solution. And I'm just going to raise it to various powers, to the 0, to the 1, to the 2, to the 3, to the 4, and then minus to the second power. And that's these six points down here with 0 at the dot. and that value squared plus one equals that value to the third. And it turns out that these six points will make three similar quadrilaterals. This big one here, and then these two smaller ones, which happen to be scaled by the super golden ratio, which is uh, this value here. And uh, here's a, there's a Wikipedia page on the super golden ratio. It's not as well known. So it turns out that those six points lead right to this substitution system where you get this fractal behavior on the edge after you iterate it for a lot of steps. And so far as I know, I'm the one who discovered this. It's just kind of very simple to produce. It comes out of nowhere and it has all sorts of nice properties. So let's look at these points a little bit more in depth. We've got these, these three quadrilaterals, and we want to, to kind of express them in terms of the super golden ratio. But it turns out that these coordinates, even though they're, they're sort of related, they're not in the algebraic number field of the super golden ratio. And if you try it with, say, two number field, it doesn't work. And I had a, a problems with that for a while. I couldn't get any of these to work. But there's a famous uh, adage in physics and mathematics. If, if it doesn't work, try 0, 1, or squaring. Well, it turns out that squaring is enough to solve everything. If you square these values and keep track of the sign, then suddenly everything is within one of these number fields. And within the number field, they have a nice form. So, so what, what does that mean? So for example, one of these coordinates 
um, one of the points is this value. When, when you square it, you get this. When you take the these um, these values and multiply them by the super golden ratio to the zero, one, and two powers, the dot product, then you get the same value. And basically, if you can take, since it's a cubic, if you can take the first three powers, zero, one, two, and multiply it by ra uh, rational numbers, those those three powers, um, uh, super golden ratio to the zero, to the one, to the two, if it, the number has that property, then it's in the field. Well, it turns out this, the squares of everything will, will turn out in, in the field. So I thought that perhaps that would be a good function to play with for algebraic numbers where you keep track of the sign and square things. And that's what this function does. It squares or takes square roots and it plays around with algebraic fields. So one other thing to, to keep track of is I'm going to do a lot with similar triangles. So I have a base here. And as I vary the base, we've got an edge, which is the base to the power 0, the edge to the power 1, the edge to the power 2. So all these, uh, as we change the base, we get different triangles. But these are good for similar triangles, because if I, say, multiply this scale, the, the triangle up by the base, then these values would become 1, 2, 3, and it's still a similar pr triangle. And I could basically use any power of the base, and I'd still have something like 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, and so on. The, the numbers would just scale up. So if I'm dealing with similar triangles, all I have to do is add a number to the edges if I'm dealing with a power edge. And when I thought about that, I wondered, well, what are all the solutions for making a wheel with similar triangles? So for example, here's one that happens to use the square root of the plastic constant. And it wasn't too hard to write a program that basically solves all of them. So after generating hundreds of these solutions, I wondered, well, which ones might actually lead to a tiling of the plane of any sort. And that's where things got interesting and somewhat tricky. It, uh, there's a lot of these values use um, right angles. And I found those weren't quite as interesting. And most of those are were known. But some, like, like this one, don't use um, right angles. So back to the super golden ratio. This is also called the Nirayana Cow constant and dates back to 1356. This guy talked about cows giving birth to calves. And the question was, what happens after 20 years? This is similar to the Fibonacci rabbit problem. So the chaos game, you can basically make these similar fractal uh, dot patterns um, where the full uh, fractal at the at the edge is similar to the to the two that are inside. And the same with this. The the full fractal triangle is equivalent to the two smaller ones. This is also called a fractal irreptible or a Rousey fractal. The quadrilateral I was showing earlier, this popped out from the power triangles. So I have a 0, 1, 3 power triangle. These are powers of the square root of the super golden ratio. The, they construct the quadrilateral that we saw earlier. And once you have these fractal triangles, you can do all sorts of things with them. For example, you can build a nautilus out of these fractal triangles. Uh, the super golden ratio is also good for weird things like pseudo random fills of a triangle. The plastic constant can also be used in the same way. And this is just basically taking 
the second and third powers of the super golden ratio. The twin for the super golden ratio is the plastic constant. Instead of uh, a third power is equal to the sum of the square plus one, it's the cube is equal to the sum of the value plus one. And it turns out that, again, you can just create a new tiling system out of nothing. You take the, the negative one power, zeroth power, first power, second power, third power, and zero, and then the plastic constant plus one is equal to the plastic constant cubed. And so for example, zero is equal to the plastic constant to zero or one and, and so on. And that leads right to a new tiling system. You just basically start with the polynomial, use its complex roots, take powers and bam, you've got this new tiling system uh, that just comes out of nowhere. Some of this was partially found by Andrzej Zak. He found this triangle here, but he didn't notice that you could just add another triangle on and get back the original triangle. These uh, triangles can also be rearranged to make another copy. So these are two different ways of deconstructing a triangle into smaller copies of itself that are all similar, but all of different sizes. In terms of the algebraic fields, there's this nice representation where everything is in the field of the plastic constant if you use this squaring technique. So those are some examples with tiling where squaring happens to work really well. Here's the Tribonacci constant and we kind of just build the snub cube out of out of these simple permutations using the Tribonacci constant as the root. It doesn't work all that well um, just uh, by itself but when you square everything everything works like magic and you can get this super nice representation. The Heilbronn 12 problem, that uses this root here, and suddenly all the points work together like magic. The Heilbronn 7 problem, same thing. Heilbronn 10 problem, same thing. 14, 8, 9. Uh, all of these, once you go into this algebraic space and square the values of the vertices, everything happens to work nice. So let's see, we've got the bronze constant here. Here's the silver constant, which is basically two. Use these power triangles. Um, uh, two to the power of zero is one. The, the square root of two to the one, basically square root of two. Square root of two to the two, the square root is basically just two. Four to the square root of two is four. But it turns out that these, these triangles um, here, zero, one, two of the powers, or one square root of two, two, you can build a four, five, six triangle with that particular triangle. Now, if you could get back to this original triangle, you'd have the substitution tiling. With the square root of three, you can get the 15th uh, tiling pentagon. Everything happens to work nicely in the square root in the uh, square root of three field. Here's another thing you can do with the square root of three. You can divide a square into similar acute triangles. Uh, so far as I, I know, the, the fewest you can do it with is 46 triangles. Next up, we have the golden ratio. Um, this is the original uh, numbers as written by Fibonacci. And there are many tiling systems that use the golden ratio, for example, the almond chair. But it's, it's not just that, you can also do these orchard problems that all happen to use the golden ratio. Uh, for example, 11 trees and 16 rows of three happens to work very nicely in the golden ratio. And here are two more examples. The Kalabi triangle, if you want a triangle where the maximal squares 
are all done and have it the identical size, this particular root um, is, is uh, something that's needed. And it turns out that all the values can be expressed in terms of that root and everything works nicely. So this trick of squaring things just happens to work really well. And so far, everything I've tried it on in, in constrained geometric systems uh, happens to have a nice representation um, in algebraic fields if you do this simple squaring trick. Another thing you need for tiling is very centric coordinates since you're wanting to repeat the same thing over and over. So we have a triangle here. These are the outer points here. And it turns out that the, the points, if you want to say add that point there, let me try annotation here. If I want to use this point here, oops, and divide the triangle into three parts, then this point here has one triangle, which is one sixth the original triangle, this one over here. Um, one triangle is one third the original triangle, that's this triangle down here. And one triangle is one half the triangle, that's this one here. So every Every point will divide up the triangle into different fractions, and that's the very centric coordinate of a point within a triangle. If you have that point and you multiply by the original triangle, the, if you take the dot product, you get the original coordinate back. So you can go very back and forth very nicely between uh, very centric coordinates and the actual coordinates. So back to the six points we're gonna use as the triangle, points one, two, and three. So the very centric coordinate of one of the uh, base points is very simple. Um, that one is point one, so it has a one for the first spot. This one has a one for the second spot. And this one has a one for the third spot. But more complex, you'll, you'll get basically three values which sum to one. They're since they're signed areas in the triangles, but all of these points, you can use this square root space trick and everything has a nice representation. And the bottom row there gives the very centric square root space representation for point six in these triangles. And with that, you can get for any tiling system, a very elegant uh, integer representation for everything within the tiling system. So this uh, psi quad system, we have the root, which is the super golden ratio. We have the point list, where everything is represented in terms of that algebraic space, and then the replacement rules and the polygon types. They're, these are usually the sizes of the polygons. And once you've done that, you've got all the information you need to do a, a substitution tiling. Here's one example here. We get the tiling system. We find the barycentric mapping we map the polygons, we clean up points since, since they can repeat, we want to eliminate the points that got repeated, and then we just recurse, we do it over and over again. And that's what this code does. And I've done lots of different tiling systems. It seems to work for everything. And I'll be glad to add more if anybody has tiling systems I've missed. So for example, here's the square root of chi tiling system. They cycle through triangle substitutions for a while since this one has many different triangle sizes, but then we start 
making the substitutions and it gets more and more complicated. So some of the values I've, I've found that work really well are two, the golden ratio, the super golden ratio, the plastic constant and the chi constant and the Fibonacci uh, constant. So here's some of the rectangles that you can make with those values. The two uh, A4 paper is based on the square root of two. And it turns out that if you start with a sheet of A4 paper with area one, one of area two, one of area four, and one of each area that's either a square or twice a square, you can reassemble them to make a A4 uh, rectangle with a area of 200. And this is a very nice dissection of a sheet of A4 paper. With the super golden ratio, you can basically divide the super golden rectangle into a square and two other super golden rectangles. With the golden ratio, you can take a golden rectangle and divide it into three similar rectangles, all based on one and the square root of the golden ratio. And with the plastic constant, you can divide it into three similar triangles based on the plastic constant. With these values, you can also self-represent infinite series. For example, here's a triangle with area two. You can divide it into a, into a triangle with area one, a triangle with area one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, one thirty-two, and so on. If you add them all up to infinity, you get two. The golden ratio, this full triangle has an area of the golden ratio. If you take one over the golden ratio, one over to the golden ratio squared, one over golden ratio to the third, one over golden ratio to the fourth, and so on to an infinity, they all add up to the golden ratio. These fractal triangles with the super golden ratio, this whole thing has an area of the super golden ratio. Here's one over the super golden ratio squared, uh, uh, one over uh, super golden ratio to the third, and so on. All of these added up together equals the super golden ratio. And the plastic constant, you can do the same thing, except here you're starting with uh, the plastic constant to the power of minus four. I don't know how to how to do one of these with um, the the third value. So if anybody can solve that, I would like to see it. The uh, Kepler triangle, which is this one, shows different powers of the golden ratio making a nice right triangle. Well, it turns out that many of these values have something similar going on where, where rho is the plastic constant and phi here is the super golden ratio. Uh, uh, this is chi here, this what looks like x, and t is the Fibonacci constant. You can make these triangles that either have a 90 degree angle or a 120 degree angle. And these are systems that have a lot of nice tiling properties, and you can also get uh, nice angles out of them as well by, by using these powers. So the constants in, I looked at in particular, the ones that work really nice in wheels were two golden ratio, super golden ratio, plastic constant, and chi. And these triangles here are solutions. Two golden ratio, super golden ratio, plastic constant, and chi. I had a feeling that all, all five of them would work as entirely new tiling systems. And it turns out I was re right on all five. They all work. And these are, these are showing the, the first few substitutions in each tiling systems. And here's, uh, here are them represented as power triangles showing how, how each one is set up. The biggest one is the chi system. And there are 128 variations of it. I haven't looked at them 
all yet. In fact, I've only looked at four of them so far, and then I got distracted by other things. But it would be nice to look at all the different variations of this chi tiling system and see what else it can do. I think it might also do something in 3D, but I'm not sure how to set that up yet. At the beginning, I showed how I can just make tiling systems appear out of nowhere. I think that that Kai can do that as well, but I don't know how. Once, once I see it, it'll look really simple, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet, so I don't. Some of the other related items are our Rousey systems and iterated function system tiling. That's what this 3D object here, this is a, a fractal object, which can be divided into eight copies of itself. And this is something that's at ifstile.com. I'm pretty sure there's some undiscovered 3D tiling systems and undiscovered 2D tiling systems. Uh, I've been working on speeding these tiling systems up. Uh, currently, when I do these tilings, I'm doing all the math and then uh, finding the points and then going back. I'm often wondering if it's possible to, once you've, uh, once you've known a particular algebraic field, if you can skip a whole bunch of steps and do things a thousand times faster. That I don't know how to do yet, but it'd be really cool if there was a way to do it, especially in the field of the golden ratio. I'm wondering if there's some really super fast way of doing calculations in VSOM or something like that. Um, I'm also wondering which tiling centers and other geometric constructs happen to have algebraic purity so that once you're in the algebraic field, if you do that operation, you'll stay in that algebraic field. So, and uh, some of these things are at demonstrations. And with that, that closes my talk. I'll be glad to take questions. Uh, are all the polynomials Polynomials always powers are three or less. And the answer to that is no. This one has power four, for example. This is a quintic tiling system. And I think there are some tiling systems that are higher. Uh, Dale Walton found this one. Uh, Dale Walton has also found many different substitution tiling systems that are very nice. Here's a quartic tiling system that's rather nice. I believe any polynomial can be the basis for a tiling system. Um, not that I know of. Uh, tiling systems usually have uh, various demands. And if it's not a Pissot system, usually it doesn't work well. Usually you want to set up a geometric constraint and then solve for that constraint. And that gives you a polynomial. And it turns out that some polynomials wind up as answers a lot more often. Are these a countable or uncountable number of these type of tilings? I believe it's a countable number of tilings, at least that look nice, because there's a limited number of polynomials that will that will solve a certain set of problems. And they um, one value I forgot to mention with with these this value here that's the discriminant of the of the root. So for example, for the super golden ratio, the discriminant is minus 31. Whenever you're dealing with a geometric system, it's usually easy to find one point in that system that's based on some constraints. And with that point, you can figure out what roots are being used for it. And with that root, you can determine what the discriminant is. And then you can look up on a site like, uh, let me see if I can find the site. There's a, a site devoted to algebraics where you can look up a discriminant and it tells you which polynomials have a literature. And I used that for, for some of this, but most of the stuff from the super golden ratio and the chi constant was stuff that I found myself. I've been using Chi for the plastic constant for the art of computer programming. Um, I, I've seen Rho for the plastic constant usually. For example, here they use Rho for the, for the uh, plastic constant. 
so that's what I usually will will use. I think that's that's somewhat standard now is to use rho for the plastic constant. However, since your um, art of computer programming is is definitely a good standard, I would be willing to change it to the chi. We just need to update Wikipedia and things like that. This is something I would like this uh, I'd like this to be better known since I think it's a beautiful result. You just basically take powers, you just basically solve this equation, you take the powers to make the points, and you get the solution. So I'd like that to be better known. This technique also works for the uh, plastic constant. This is also a, a nice result. For David Hall's question, uh, yes. Um, uh, in a larger notebook, I've basically made a list of every um, uh, every uh, quadratic, cubic, and uh, quartic polynomial that seems to work with a constrained geometric system nicely. I've and I've got oh about a thousand results, so it's a pretty big big file. But um, almost half the results uh, uh, fall into either the golden ratio, plastic constant, or super golden ratio. Those are those are the big three for for tiling systems and other uh, geometric constraint problems. So it turns out that that uh, the zone system based on the golden ratio just happens to be one of these perfect sets. Everything works nicely in that field. Some of these items were also in this blog article. Uh, shattering the plane. So this is kind of another source that can be downloaded. If you do, if you search for shattering the plane, you should be able to find this article. Neat tricks. Uh, I have no idea what that notebook is. Is that one I have? Oh, let's take a look. This is a a uh, helper program for the Wolfram function repository. When I'm when I'm basically editing uh, functions, the neat tricks basically lets me move things around within all these various functions for the uh, function repository. Yeah, it, it uh, the neat tricks uh, only really works with. Uh, massaging builds for the function repository. I, I do have plenty of other notebooks, though. For example, I've got a lot of things for topics I'm playing with. I've got a lot for, for uh, sparse rulers, for example. And some of these notebooks I haven't looked at for a while, so I'm not sure what all they do. Let's see one if you if you follow uh, cracking the cryptic at all i set up uh, this crazy uh, sudoku where digits don't repeat on a diagonal unless an arrow points to itself and uh, for example if this was a 3 uh, the only way a, the 3 could repeat on the diagonal is if it was 3 away 1 2 3 here which is what he's explaining there. And it turns out that there's only one Sudoku that can be set up this way, where that no numbers repeat on the diagonal unless there's an arrow pointing to itself. And uh, he called this a miracle solution here. And I've got hundreds of other things that I've played with. Many thanks for, for, for seeing my talk. I'm glad we got uh, a good uh, turnout.